Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. It's a new prescription for a new you, America. Let's kick it off and go with Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure, darling. Um, What's up? Well, my husband's been plagued with these headaches for like two months now. Um, mm. they're, he defines them as low-grade headache. It's only when he sneezes or coughs or picks up something heavy or bends down. Um, we've been to an internist. We've been to an ear, nose, and throat. We've been to a neurologist. We've had an MRI done. There's nothing there in the brain that's remarkable um and they've given us some medication called endomethacin okay um i guess an anti-inflammatory but they're mentioning spinal fluid and i'm kind of getting worried and he's concerned and he's i mean he's continuing to do his daily routines um or kind of so uh, putting off everything else so he's had his workup done, and, right. and just no one, all the doctors that you've been to, no one can really figure it out, right? Right. Where does it stand? What do well, they say? What do they tell you to do? I'm curious. It's um well, all they've given me is or him is a prescription for endomethacin. That's it. Just the endomethacin. Yeah, that's it. And my my response to the doctor um, was well. Is that it? You're just going to give him something for the pain, and we're not going to find out what this is from and cure it. And evidently, they don't know. They're mm-hmm. calling it a cough headache. I mean, technically, cough headache. How's his blood pressure? His blood pressure is great. Is it? Where does the headache hurt the most? I know you said when he bends over, it makes it hurt. But when does it coughs, ever hurt when he's... When he coughs or when he sneezes. Initially, it's a stabbing pain, and then it's just a dull throb that just goes away after a while. But where does it hurt, though? Where on his head? Yeah, um, like, what, the, like over the right eye or the left eye or the back of the head? In the back. In the back, and he does, does he drink, something's on the side. Does he drink a lot of coffee? He drinks uh, decaf. Okay. And it only How's his stress the, level? How's his stress level? Well, he's retired, so I would think he'd have a lot of stress. I can't imagine where it's coming from if he's having a lot of stress. So. What did he do for a living for years? Um, office work. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, did he run a company? Did he, we're uh, retired now. so. No, no, no. What did he do up to the point he got retired? Well, he, he worked for um, the government in the D.C. area. In, okay. In just an office job. The reason I'm asking is, does he miss his work? Uh, no. <laughs> no, we're very happy. <laughs> so we're life, happy okay, life, life is much happier. Okay, yeah. I got it. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes men, when they retire, it can almost become more stressful, and you can see weird, weird things can happen in the body. Headaches, I mean, arthritis, you start getting all kinds of weird symptoms when men, that's why I'm going down that rabbit trail, is I'm trying yeah. to figure out exactly if no, that we're might be the case. we have a vegetable farm and that's amazing we do our own thing and we're outside all day and we eat organically and raise organically so we can't that's figure fantastic. this out he's really healthy and okay does he sleep all right has a sleep yeah. pattern are they pretty good mm-hmm. yep he does. okay and it only hurts when he coughs sneezes strains or right. otherwise right? right not just when he's hanging out normally right okay right. does he exercise Fantastic. We More get a cardio lot of or, or weightlifting? Um, both, actually. We go to the gym, so he's lifting weights. And, of course, we have a lot of work around here. So well, now that's straining. Does it give him a headache when he works out with weights? Um, he hasn't said it does, so I'm assuming no. Huh. It's usually when he bends over and picks something up, which I thought initially it's your sinuses, but nothing showed up. No. I'll tell you what, it sounds it sounds to me to be more of a structural based headache because of this because of the straining that from that would come from say doing bicep curls or bench press or shoulder press machine or whatever it might be, there's still some straining involved there. And if that's not giving him 
a headache and the the increase of blood flow from the working out and the exercising is not affecting him that's a good that's a really good sign so see those are more clues that 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 are very very helpful here's my thoughts if it was my if it was me this is what i would do if he's having those kind of headaches and you've done the complete workup and you're, the medical doctors and the physicians have given him the endomethacin and they're scratching their heads and let's just they're just saying well let's let's see how this works that's what that means is when a doctor gives you medicine and says let's see how this works it usually means i'm not real sure what it is this is my best guess so let's just keep an eye on it and and that's not knocking it i mean that's just they they've kind of come to the end of their rope and they're doing the best they can and that's that's a good thing because they're doing everything they can to help him. You know, they're not being bad doctors. They're doing what they can to help. So here's the thought. Remember, there's three sides to the health triangle. And the body's affected by every one of these sides. All three sides are important. And one side affects the other. So you've got the mental side, brain chemistry, neurotransmitters, subconscious mind. You've got the chemical side. And that's how your body chemistry functions, how the heart, liver, lungs, kidneys, liver, pancreas, thyroid, how all that stuff works. And then you've got the structural side, the bones, the muscles, and the nerves. Now, the nerves control everything in the body. The interesting thing about that is is that the nerves go in through the spinal cord, out of the spinal cord, rather, uh, through the vertebral bones, and then out into the different organ systems and various tissues within, within the body. Well, if you the ones that go up in through the cervical region, the neck, kind of the base of the neck, the occipital, occipital area, all of that part of the, the region of the body would be good to have someone look at that and potentially they can do certain tests on it and there might be even some manipulations that they would want to do in their own style that would be beneficial and it's definitely something to look into without a shadow of a doubt. I think if you don't, he would be doing himself a misserv- or disservice in not looking down that route and letting them evaluate and even doing some of their treatments along the way because when headaches like that are unexplained there a lot of times they can be chemical they can be genetic there's a lot of different factors that can be environmental toxins that could be causing some of that but the structural part we see often with headaches and it's one of the least areas to be addressed it's kind of the well whenever nothing else works let's go that way and believe it or not the structural part of the body plays such a key role and is so important it's it's vital for someone to look at it in that regard. So all the horror stories you hear about with people getting hurt and injured, it's just, it's, I mean, it's, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than that happening. So don't let that worry you. It's actually care that is very good and that he could really benefit from, I think. So take a peek at that. Get with a D.O., Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, and keep me posted. You can always call me back on 888 That's 888 7272. You're listening to the best in Healthy Talk Radio. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. join and catch up with everything going on behind the scenes with the show and all the new information coming out. Great information about our weekly email newsletter. So if you're not signed up for that, U.S. government sends home health care money to states. A new report says that states stand to gain billions of dollars as provisions in the U.S. health care plan to move Medicaid patients out of institutions, come online with 13 states awarded $45 million in grant And the Health and Human Services Agency said this, that Medicaid is the health program for the poor that was greatly expanded under the health care reform 
Extending Medicaid's reach, the U.S. government is also increasing reimbursements sent to states and awarding new grants for the program. Still, most states are worried that they will not have enough money to administer many of the parts of the health care plan and are requesting waivers for implementing components they cannot afford under their stretched budgets. Now, many are also trying to block the law in federal courts, saying it unsurped states and individuals' rights. Florida, which is leading a multi-state legal challenge to the law, was one of the 13 states awarded a grant to move the, el- move the elderly people with disabilities and Medicaid recipients with mental illnesses from nursing homes and other institutions back into their homes or communities. The federal government said the grants will likely help 13,000 people. Massachusetts received the largest grant of $13.5 million, followed by Minnesota, which was awarded $13.4 million in the grant. States will also receive a 6% increase in the federal reimbursements for providing nurses and other home-based support to people on Medicaid. States could see a total of $3.7 billion in new funds to pay for attendance who help individuals with daily activities such as bathing and also help move people by paying for utility deposits, rent, or household supplies. It's a great thing, great thing to for what they're doing with the elderly and people that are a little bit more challenged with their health care to get them in better positions and with better care, more, I guess, care that is closer to um, closer to home so it doesn't feel so disconnected triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two jason from chicago writes in an email which you can always send me it says my dad's 58 and he's just been diagnosed with congestive heart failure is it too late to help him never too late jason that's the one thing realize that it's never too late to help someone it's never too late for someone to get well it's never too late for there to be a turnaround in someone's health there can always be a change but the key is making the right kind of choices every single day now are there genetics that play a role? Yes. Is there, are there some damage or is there some damage that probably has been done with congestive heart failure that's irreversible? Yes. But it's never too late. Never too late to help someone. Never too late to walk with a health challenge with someone. It's never too late. So my biggest encouragement for you is get him started on the basics. Make sure his diet is sound. Make sure the foods he's putting in his body very good. Make sure he can handle even the smallest amount of exercise, which his doctor probably doesn't want him to do too much, but at least make sure he's doing something. Drinking plenty of water, half his body weight in ounces of water every single day. So many things he can be doing to make sure that he has the optimal health that he can have. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Let's go to Josh. Hey Josh. I got a question. I have a right. I got a friend who um she's always got really purple feet and this just started recently she's always she's always had cold feet excuse me and she just started having purple feet okay and she's always got really clammy hands kind of like sweaty hands but i was just wondering if there could be i've always thought about circulation i've you know googled everything i could find but i'm just not finding and you know enough information for me to even want to take in as far as just from the kind of information that i'm getting from the internet so i was just wondering if there was a if you had an idea or we could pinpoint of something you know what what that could be what's her age she's about 17 she's mexican and uh she lives in tucson arizona so it's really dry hot i don't know if that has anything to do with it (laughs) no it's no i know what you're saying though uh no not really i mean purple her feet turn purple is that something new that started or it's been there for a while it started about i guess a, a week ago and they've always been really cold, and yeah. doctors have always said she's had some kind of weird problem, and they've never been able to pinpoint what it was. But this is new, so I didn't know if there was, you know, if you know anybody or have ever dealt well, with she, anybody that had that problem. Well, it's it just depends. I mean, does it hurt? Does it ache when it turns purple no, like that? Mm-mm, doesn't hurt. No pain at all whatsoever? Mm-mm. Have, has she gone to the doctor since it started turning purple? Not yet. I think she went today, but I haven't talked to her. But you haven't talked to her. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the the old adage is, I mean, with with extremities like that, especially more in the hands, there can be just an extreme you know, kind of an achiness and cool, cold feeling in the hands. And it, it's it's typically Raynaud's, uh, you know, and there's there can be a lot of different things 
associated with that. It's, it's but it, it's rarely seen in the feet. So for the feet to start turning colors, it could you know obviously vascular. But if the doctors have looked at it, and and you haven't, you don't know what they have said yet. I'd be curious to see because I mean, again, there's one thing to say, well, they're purple, and they're cold, but they don't hurt, and there's no achiness or no pain to it. It's you just need to be able to see that, and that's where going to the doctor's office and all that is mm-hmm. is really good. And but when you have circulation issues like that, she could be deficient in some things. If it came on out of nowhere. I mean, granted, she may have always had cold extremities, but it could be several things. I mean, it could be everything from red blood cells being anemic. It could be, um, my goodness, there's so many things that it could be with that. Rutin is really good for vessel health. And if you've got anything weird going on, it's a supplement you get at a health food store. But it's Rutin, R-U-T-I-N, can be very good. And, you know, again, with vascular-related issues, simple things. It's the simple things like CoQ10, all those kind of supplements are very good for vascular health, can help the extremities tremendously, especially if they're always cold. And the discoloration is where the doctor's opinion is going to come in. And I'd be curious to know. If you want to email me, you can shoot it to me. Thanks for the call. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Health really is your greatest wealth. Do you view it that way? Have you been given a diagnosis and you think, well, I guess I'm just stuck with this. It's what my grandma had. It's what grandpa had. And now this is what I have. And so I might as well just take it, suck it up, and deal with it. It's not true. Your health is your greatest wealth. So realize this. The body is pretty amazing. As we say in the South, pretty darn amazing. Because 80% of the health challenges we face today are diet and lifestyle related. That means that somehow, some way, we've lifestyled our way into getting sick. But the good news is, if we can lifestyle our way into getting sick, we can lifestyle our way out and get well. But you have to be willing to change. And only you can take responsibility for your health. No one else can. No one else can. No one else can take, uh, take responsibility for your health for you but you. And people, that's what they always want to do. Everyone wants to take a pill, and they hope the pill is going to correct everything with their health. And it won't. It never will. And you have to be willing to make the changes every single day on your own. And you have to support. You can have friends support and family support, but no one else can take responsibility for your health but you. And that's what we're here for, to help you go from where you are to where you need to be in your health. We're going to kick it off now with Linda. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the show, darling. Hello. How are you? I'm living well. Uh, I have a question for you. Okay. I had a complete uh, five years ago, and okay. I never was put on any type of hormone therapy, and they've tried me on bioidentical hormones, and they didn't help me. Uh, they tried me on estradiol, and it didn't help me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I reckon I'm just, like you say, stuck, in, and I don't know what to do. Uh, I go to the doctor. My blood pressure is out of control. Um, I don't have any type of, I don't know how to say this, uh, my body's just not the same. And I can't do anything about it. And it's, I don't know how to live with it. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, I've tried everything. And I, I can't get over it. I don't know how to deal with it. I got it. Is it mostly is it mostly your energy levels that you're concerned with? I don't what is have the biggest... any energy. I don't sleep. Okay. Um, I have the the mood swings. Uh, it looks like if it was hormonal from not having any hormones, they would put me on it when they operated on me. Um, they even took out my appendix, and I just I'm just tired all the time. My back kills me. Okay. I get it. Now, have you gone to your doctors, and have they done anything? Have they just told you this is it, this is the best it's going to get, or have they offered any suggestions or options for you? 
they will put me, first they put me on clonazepam, and I slept two days on one tablet. They didn't tell me I could break the tablet in two because some tablets you can't crush or break or chew or anything like that. Um, they put me, I, come, I brought myself off of it, and then they put me on Prozac, and I woke up one morning after I had took the largest dose that they had put me on, and I didn't even know who anybody else was, not alone myself. I said, I cannot take this, and it's not mixing with my blood pressure medicine. Sure. Well, after that, um, they had tried me on the Estradiol patch. They tried me on Vivel, and they tried me on another type of pill, and it didn't help me. And I think finally he just got disgusted with me. And, and now, that's it. Uh, since I've been without hormones all this time, my back, the center of my back, up at the top, uh, where your the zero line goes, it hurts me constantly. I don't know what to do. My legs are always tired. I don't know what to do. Okay. That's all right. I understand. I know you're in a tough place. I get that. Here's Here's kind of the foundation. When you've gone through and had a complete, like you talked about, and you've had a hysterectomy, and... And all of these different changes are taking place in your body. You have to kind of step back and say, okay, what is working? It feels like everything's falling apart, but what is working? And what can I do to make some changes? Because if everything feels like it's falling apart, you don't feel good, you don't have energy, you ache, you hurt. I mean, I get that. Uh, Usually for breakfast, I have bacon and eggs. I don't eat the bread. Uh, If I have a snack, I'll have a piece of fruit or something like that. and uh, for dinner, I'll have a piece of, uh, if I fry my meat, I fry it in canola oil without any flour or anything. And then I usually have a green vegetable or maybe a salad. I don't eat a lot of junk food. That's something I don't do. But um, And I drink tea, but I don't, I usually use equal or splendor in my tea. I don't eat a lot of sweets. And But if I get on, if they put me on a hormone, it's like I blow up overnight. Yeah, I got it. So I'm eating right. You are eating pretty well. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change a couple things based on what you said, but I am proud of you. It's not like you're eating a ton of junk food. Lunch needs to – you need to make sure that you include always at every meal. Let me just say this. You need a lean-quality protein like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs. You need a low-glycemic carbohydrate, fruits and vegetables, and you're doing that. And then you always need a good healthy fat. So here's an issue too. Hormones in the body are, even though you've had a hysterectomy, your body still produces estrogen in the fat cells. So the the body is pretty amazing and it's res, quite resilient. So even though you remove parts from the body, it will, it will compensate and can work very well in other areas. So something to consider for yourself is to make sure you go in and you, you – Balance everything out within your diet, first of all. Lean proteins, low glycemic carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, and the good healthy fats. Your your fats are going to be really, really important because the fats don't make you fat. Remember that. That's that's a key component. Fats don't make you fat, but they actually are going to make a big difference in your overall health with your hormones and the way you feel, aches and pains. They lower inflammation. And almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados – Fish oils, very important to be taking cod liver oil every day, at least a tablespoon. Don't do the gel caps, at least a tablespoon of the oil every single day. And matter of fact, the foundational four supplements would be the top priority in my eyes. And I'm just a big fan, and that's why I talk a lot about it in my book. And here on the show, I'm just a big a big believer. These are the four things that we don't get in our food supply that we need, and that's a good whole food multivitamin digestive enzymes to break our food down, cod liver oil for your omega-3 fats, vitamin A and vitamin D, and probiotics. Probiotics put the good bacteria back in our digestive tract. So real simple to follow, but yet so I mean, critical for overall health and something that I would desperately encourage you to look into. White willow bark is really good, too, for some of the aches and the pains. But getting that gut cleaned out, meaning everything, canola oil, don't cook with that anymore. Because it turns to a trans fat and one of the number one cancer-causing agents that we have. If you're going to cook with any kind of oil, there's three. There is coconut oil, very good. There's also butter, regular butter, and then grapeseed oil. So any of those are going to be fine to cook with. Coconut oil and butter 
are the top two. If you've got to go with grape seed, go with that. And you'll notice a big, big difference in your overall health, energy levels, and the way that you feel. Now, energy is going to be comprised of a couple of things. With hysterectomy, it could be a result of estrogen, could be a result of progesterone as well. But the adrenal glands, the adrenal glands are the body stress glands. And when they get worn out, when they get tired, when they're not functioning at their peak level, which they're two little glands that sit on top of the kidneys. So if they're not working at their best, then your body's not going to function at its best. And it's important to get those built up, keep them strong. Vitamin B5, vitamin C, panathenic acid, all of that works hand in hand to keep those adrenals functioning at a peak level, at a high level, and keeping them at a place that they need to be. So something to encourage you to look into, B5, panathenic acid, and also vitamin C. So I hope that helps. Knowing this, things like black cohosh can help, wild yam root can help, but make sure you work with your physician getting blood work done. Don't just take a bunch of supplements and just hope you feel better. Get with a doctor that can monitor your hormones, even if you decide not to do the bioidenticals and all that, which I'm, you know, I'm not telling you to do that. But getting the blood work done, and or saliva test, however you want to do that, however your doctor wants to monitor it, seeing exactly how your body's responding, how it's functioning, and what it needs so it can function at the highest level. But one thing don't lose is your hope. Don't lose the fact that even though you've had a hysterectomy and you feel like you're falling apart, you know the one thing you've got to remember is you're not. You're not falling apart. Your body's not going to just just collapse on you. You know, you can do well. Your body can recover in many ways. And you can have vitality again. It's not over. You may feel like it's over, but it's not. And you can have energy again. And, you know, the goal here is to get Linda back. We need Linda to be the best Linda that Linda can be. And we need you to be all you can be. But see, the thing is, no one else can help you. No one else can do this. You have to do it for you. And even on the days you don't feel like exercising, you get out and exercise. On the days where you don't have any energy, you've got to tell yourself, self, I'm not going to be, t- I'm not going to let you beat me today. You have a little self-talk. That's what we always say. And people say, well, I don't, you know, talking to yourself is crazy. It's not. And sometimes the only motivator we have is ourselves. It means you, 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 you be a certain way, you do it, and then you have it. So be well in your mind. Do the things it takes to be well that you know textbook-wise that you have to do to be well. And then you'll have it. It's amazing how that works. It's more than visualization. It's about taking radical action. But just know this, you're already on a good path. Get your mind right. Start doing the things today that may be a little bit difficult and watch how your body can change. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Asking Healthy Talk Radio, the show where your health really is your greatest wealth. Jesse, you're on. How can I help? Um. I was curious uh, to ask you a question about this uh, health challenge that I have. And it's uh, last maybe five days ago, uh, I woke up one morning and um, I have this pain and it radiates from like the xiphoid process all the way up to my larynx. And it goes, I can even feel it through my, my back. You know, it's it's like a, now, I had pericarditis one time, sure. and it feels similar to that. But I went to the doctor today, and he 
it's not that, he said. And uh, he's sending me to a GI guy. And uh, and they said because of the pain and where it's at, they, they're getting me in rather quick. They got me in tomorrow already. And um, I was wondering, um, with that being said, I also have, um, I mean, I have Barrett's, and I've had that for about 10 years. I was diagnosed with it 10 years ago, but I had the Neeson fundiplication at the same time. They found the barracks, and um, and I was just wondering, uh, you think that's esophagus related? Also, uh, my head, if I bend over, my head goes below my waist. It's unbearable. I mean, the pain is, or if I belch, the pain is really shoots up. But it's not acid. It's not burning. It's just, it's a deep pain. Sharp pain. Well, the Barrett's. Let's talk about that. How's how are you dealing with? I mean, obviously you've had acid reflux then for a long time, right? Yeah, I had it for eighteen years before they decided to, you know, diagnose it and fix it. Yeah. And so, for the most uh, part, is was, it taken care of? Yeah, yeah. When after the Nissan was done, um, I didn't have a bit of trouble, but they did keep me on Prilosec pretty much uh, about. 60 milligrams a day, and um, now I'm taking something called, I think it's called uh, Xylocant or something like that. Um, I don't know. It's a new, it's a new um, PP, uh, proton pump inhibitor. Sure. And, and it's, it's working a, it's okay, right? It's more powerful one, they said. But it's working okay? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, there's no acid. There's no burning. And that's what he asked me. You got anything coming up in your mouth? And I said, no, not at all. There's nothing like that. I think the, the Nissan's still working great, but uh, the Nissan's still working great. And um, the it's just this pain. I don't know where, you know, just all of a sudden. What I will tell you that I missed taking my my Prilosec for two days, and um, I didn't have it. And the second day was pretty rough, so I went out and got it. And then, uh, And after that, that's when the pain started. Have you, do you eat do you eat much dairy products at all like cheese yogurt milk oh I love yogurt yeah I eat a lot of yogurt and okay. but I drink but uh, the only other dairy thing I eat is uh goat milk I, I drink a lot of raw goat milk raw goat milk okay what about breads and things like that do you eat much of that no nah, pasta bread nah, I stay away from bread I used to work out hard and, and uh, I know about you know staying away from bread and pasta and that and all that kind of thing. So what does your diet look like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, typically? Bre- Jesse, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think we must have lost. Yeah, we lost Jesse. That's okay. All right, well, here's the deal, Jesse. The, the bottom line is if if you're not really eating gluten, which, you know, gluten is the protein found in the – breads, pasta, all the flour-based foods, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, all of that. That's always a big key. And if you're getting that constant pain in that area, it could be still part of the Barrett's possibility that still some residual from that. But the other thing that you can consider in that area, if you've got the constant burning, is that possibly you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Betaine hydrochloride you can take as a supplement form. Or you can use apple cider vinegar. That works very, very well. And you can also consider aloe vera juice and glutamine. Both of those can be very, very beneficial to when you're, well, when you're dealing with that sort of, sort of pain. Now, if you're having more of it, if it feels more structural, meaning you're seeing from the xiphoid right there, and it is more of a kind of a, an achy pain through that area, which I would ask you next, I would consider going to somebody that works on the structural part of the body, bones, muscles, nerves, which would be an osteopathic physician, even someone like a physical therapist or a chiropractic physician. They all could look in that area and kind of rule things out a little bit because if you had Barrett's, which is a serious condition, I mean, Barrett's can turn into cancer, no doubt about it. But when you've had Barrett's and it's gone to that level, then getting those kind of pains within there can be a little bit of a challenge, but it's something that, you know, you just got to, you got to keep an eye on. Keep me posted on how that goes. 888 CNN reported about how cell phone exposure 
increases brain cell activity. The radiation emitted after just 50 minutes on a mobile phone increases the activity in the brain cells. According to a new government-funded study, the effects of that brain activity are not known, said the researchers who called for more study. Phones that were turned off did not create the same brain activity. And the small study published in the Journal of American Medical Association was the first to look specifically at how electromagnetic radiation from cell phones affects glucose metabolism, a normal function in the brain. The brain activity means that cells are using glucose to create energy, and the brain normally produces the amount of glucose it needs to function properly. But these new findings don't tell us whether activating the cells artificially, in this case by cell phone radiation, will have a negative effect on our health they say that simply don't know and calls for further investigation. All kinds of things I believe we're going to find about cell phones and how they're affecting our health and probably not for the positive. And I'm the world's worst using a BlackBerry thing all day long. Puts another hour in the charts. I'd like to thank our producer, Jay Patrick. Go tell one person something you learned on this show, and together we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the Best in Healthy Talk Radio. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.